Solder isn't sticking to my XT60 pad. I have no idea what's wrong. What should I do? Um, let's see. Uh, the, the reason the solder isn't sticking is because you are not heating up the pad enough. So when we think about soldering, the whole goal of solder is to heat the pad enough that it can melt the solder, and then that is the, the basis of soldering. So the analogy I like to use is when you're cooking, and let's not talk about cooking on like a grill where we're using direct heat to cook the food, okay? But let's talk about cooking on a stovetop. When you're cooking on a stovetop, your goal is to heat the pan. You put heat into the pan, you put the food on the pan, the pan cooks the food, okay? The, the stove, the, uh, the, the stovetop heats the pan, the pan cooks the food. That's the analogy I like to use for soldering, because people think that the goal of soldering is to use the soldering iron to melt the solder. That's not it. That would be like putting your steak directly on the stovetop, which would cook the steak, I guess, but it would kind of make a mess. The analogy falls apart a little bit. When you're heating, when you're soldering, you need to think about applying heat to the pad such that the pad becomes hot or the wire or whatever it is you're soldering, such that it becomes hot and then the solder melts and you know then you complete the joint. And if the solder isn't sticking, it's because the pad isn't getting hot. Now, the question of why the pad isn't getting hot, that is like, that's like saying, I tried to fly an airplane and I crashed the airplane, what did I do wrong? Well, there's like a million things you could have done wrong, okay? So th 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 there we get into, well, you just need a soldering tutorial, but like, many times people are using an iron that isn't hot enough. They're using too small of a tip so the tip doesn't hold heat. They're using a cheap iron that isn't really capable of, of managing heat correctly. You don't need a super expensive iron. A good quality like $40 or $50 iron will more than get the job done. But if you've just got some Home Depot special iron that you bought, maybe it's not really doing a good job. Um, your iron's tip may be oxidized or otherwise damaged so that it's not transmitting heat. And then it may be a question of technique. You, you, if you simply take a hot iron and apply it to a pad, the pad won't actually get a lot of heat into it because you actually need like some wet solder or flux to help the heat flow. And there's various things you can do with technique about how you apply the iron to the pad and so forth to get it hot. But the short answer is you're not getting enough heat into the pad and you need to study the things that you could be doing wrong. Um, I have a video that I will share with you. Oh, not that one. Here we go. Most FPV pilots need to watch this soldering tutorial. Most FPV pilots need to watch the soldering tutorial. Um, and it is my 101 soldering tutorial. It's 49 minutes long. I highly recommend that if you don't, if you have never had any like formal training in soldering and you're completely self-taught, especially if you're not getting good results, like if you're completely self-taught and you always get good results and you have no complaints, more power to you. Whatever you're doing seems to be working, I guess. But if you're self-taught and or you're not taught at all and you're not getting good results, strongly recommend working through this tutorial, watching it, paying attention, etc. What is a reasonable number of drones to own? Thank you for $2, three blades. I mean, there's no answer to that. Some people have a million. Some people have as many as you can regularly fly. That's what I would say. I personally don't like the idea of sort of collecting drones for the sake of collecting them. I want to see them out there getting flown and crashed and used. You know, like if you're like Jay Leno and you like to collect cars and you turn it into a museum, okay, I guess I could see that. Uh, but if you just hoard drones or cars or guitars or whatever, and you just put them on the shelf and never play them, and like it just seems like a, a real waste to me. I, obviously, it's your money. Do what you want to do with it. I'm not really like saying you're anything bad about you. But um, now I have a wall. Says the man with a wall full of drones. I fly. Each of those drones has a purpose. When those drones don't have a purpose anymore, I move them on to a person. I sell them or give them away. 100%. Um, like, like a few of, two of those are my five inch racing drones. Uh, two or three of those are my five inch freestyle drones. One of them is an analog drone that I keep just so I have at least one analog drone on the shelf in case I need analog for something. One of them is a walk snail drone that I have for the same reason, etc., etc., etc. 
Like as a as a drone professional, I have a need to have you know a, a variety of drones at my disposal for the reasons you know to do my job, right? Um, but uh, again, as soon as those drones are no longer useful or not getting flown regularly, I, I move them on. That's what I would say. But there's no there's no answer. It's whatever the number you you decide. Is there any way to transmit audio when using high definition video? The short answer is no. So audio, uh, analog video transmitters have the ability to transmit audio. And the reason for that is that they're essentially transmitting a television signal, an old analog television signal. And, and television has the capability to transmit an audio sideband. In fact, it can transmit stereo audio. And so most video transmitters don't transmit any audio, but some of them do. They have an, a microphone input, or some of them have a built-in microphone, and they'll just transmit that audio to your to your goggles, and then your goggles can output that over the headphone port. Um, the HD video transmitters don't do that. None of them transmit audio, uh, and there is no like realistic way to get them to do it. Um, the original DJI Air Unit had a microphone on it, the big one, not the Vista. It had a microphone on it, and there, for, there was, if you rooted it and you installed WTFOS, uh, there was the beginnings of a hack that would allow it to transmit audio back to the goggles. And I don't know if that ever was fully realized, or it doesn't really matter, because nobody flies the original air unit anymore, anymore anyway. Well, hardly anybody, I would say. Um, and so essentially the answer is no. And you might be thinking, well, what if I could just add some kind of other transmitter? Well, I mean, theoretically, you could add an analog video transmitter to your drone, hook it up with a microphone, and then transmit that signal back to what? To an analog receiver module on your goggles that then outputs just audio? Like, that's pretty cumbersome. Not many people are going to do that. And on top of that, having the two transmitters on your drone at the same time is going to screw screw things up. Like, they're both going to be transmitting 5.8 gigahertz. They're both going to be high-powered. They're going to interfere with each other. Unless you, can, unless you have a fairly big aircraft where you can get some separation between them, you know, that's going to not work really well. So the answer, practically speaking, is no. Uh, has Walksnail caught up to the V2 goggles in the Vista? Seriously considering getting it. Uh, the V2 goggles and the Vista? Sure, I'll give Walksnail that. Still not as good as the O3. Uh, you know, just gut check. Like, I, obviously, I don't have, like, a rigorous long-range test to compare. There are differences in the way that they perform. Like, Walksnail, I think, tends to be a little more stable with the bitrate, whereas DJI tends to waver around more. So, like, it's not an apples-to-apples -apples comparison. But overall, I'd say the usable range of Walksnail is similar to the V2 and the Vista, not as good as the O3.